of all, um, it's great to be here, uh, especially on this anniversary. Because uh, after all, that's where it started. This is where it started. <laughs> uh, you know, when I was two years old, on those skis that are in the back room <laughs> that Bruce made me. Um, and then uh, uh, Camp Fortune came after, after the backyard. <laughs> And then the years of racing that started when I was six, I remember my first race was a downhill race on the Côte d'Or. If anybody here remembers the Côte d'Or, oh, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> uh, I think today if the trail were there and was the same as in those days, I wouldn't go down and it would probably touch the trees. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah. Then, uh, of course, the race you mentioned uh, that I won at age seven, the senior race, and uh, I would add that uh, the prize was a gold compact. <laughs> Which I don't know where it went, I don't have it anymore, but, um, uh, but that was, and I guess if you, if you look at uh, uh, milestones or uh, markers along the way, uh, that race would be one of my first markers, I guess. And uh, the next, of course, would have been Barbara Ann Scott coming back to Ottawa when I was, you know, I was eight and just standing on the sidewalk. Like, wow, I kind of like the reception. <laughs> 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 and I thought, well, you know, maybe, uh, maybe I could do that. Maybe, um, mm -hmm. maybe with the with some hard work, I could bring Canada's first melon skiing back to uh, back to the country. And, uh, so that stayed with me, you know, all those years. And of course, what is so instrumental in those days and today still is is the work that the local people do in putting on races, and, you know, standing at the top of that slow hill, trying to blow weather with the wind blowing, and doing hand timing and uh, carrying the flags down after <coughs> dark, after the race is over. Um, you know, without that type of dedication by, by so many volunteers, you, you wouldn't have any uh, any racers. Uh, so it's it's uh, terrific that to have this opportunity to sort of come back, at least uh, belatedly, say a thank you to to so many people here at home, and you know the people from the ski club and the Gatlin ski zone at that time. That's Today it's getting a little more complicated, um, <laughs> but um, it's, uh, I mean, it was just uh, such an important part. And also, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I have the members of the Gatton Ski Zone to thank for fighting to put me on the team in 1954 when I was 15, because there were many people that thought I was too young and I was going to get hurt. So uh, I owe them uh, thanks as well. Um, but uh, once once I got to racing internationally, which was every second year, you know, 54, then they handed the field the team for the Olympics in 56. In between, I broke my leg very badly. Um, so there, there wasn't any real support in the in between years. But when the SEAL paid her way to Europe, her own way in 57, mm -hmm. after winning a bronze in Fortina, mm -hmm. She was able. She knew she had to be on the European circuit to to win gold, and paid her own way over. Hired Peppy as her coach that winter. And that's when I stayed at home to finish high school, I guess. And um, then in '58, she, you know, proved what she did was right, and she brought home two gold medals to Canada. And as a result, the CDSA at the time, the Canadian Amateur Ski Association, um, was. Uh, that's when they thought, well, you know, we've got to do something about this. And they fielded a team to Europe in 1959, which is an off year. And I was really the beneficiary of, of what Seal did initially. So, uh, 59 was the first uh, off year that we had a team to Europe. Uh, we had a, a young team, obviously, it's probably the oldest girl on the team. And, uh, uh, was able to win two two big races that year, uh, and as a result, could sort of judge how to get to my peak at the right time, which was important mm -hmm. in the Olympic year in '60. Mm -hmm. I think kids today have a, have a tough time in that they're it's World Cup, everything is World Cup. So if you mess up in one race, you've got another World Cup 
next week or two weeks later, it's a little bit different when you're aiming at you know three medals uh, in one once every four years. Mm -hmm. So it's a very different way of training. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, so I think today that's that's a little bit tough for, uh, for some of the kids on the team. But um, so I was very fortunate to have that opportunity in, in 1959. And, and then in '60. Um, they sent two, just two of us, um, Nancy Holland and myself, to Europe uh, to, to train early on in the season. And then we met up with the rest of the gang, Elizabeth and crew, uh, who had, had formed, a, a, I guess you were training up west. Kimberly and Kimberly. And, and, then, awesome. and then we met up, we all met up, um, the ones that final pick of the team met up in uh, Aspen and uh, Alta before Squaw Valley. With the thinking being, and there were no Europeans there for the, those couple of races before the Olympics. Um, the Americans <coughs> stayed in Europe, which was great because Actually, some of them were there and they were making cat calls from the sidelines. So they, I don't remember, they were the talking about them. Really? Yeah. I don't know, maybe they came at the end. Maybe okay. at the end, but uh, yeah, because so she did deserve to lose by 3.3 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, there was a lot of gamesmanship in those days, especially with Penny, too. <laughs> we shouldn't mention it. <laughs> um, but um, uh, the thinking being, if we came back earlier than the Europeans, it's uh, the Swap Valley was so high, extremely high, and Europe is much, much lower. So we had an extra probably three weeks mm -hmm. out west at a higher altitude, mm -hmm. which you know, helps the development of you know, your oxygen intake and processing. So I think that was a very, very good move at the time. And, um, uh, I was also very fortunate in Europe, in the, um, we, we had two races in Europe first. Uh, the, whole, the first one of the season in Grindelwald, Switzerland, Switzerland, which I always hated, and it was always bad weather, and the race was up on top of the mountain. Um, training downhill, those days, you train downhill, you're all on the train, all on the hill. <laughs> Fog, didn't yeah. matter. <laughs> But the worst was um, Nancy and uh, Nancy Holland and I were skiing behind our trainer, Pepe, down the last shows, which it was kind of a rolling, this type of thing. It wasn't extremely difficult. And I was last in line. And, um, but they had Packers on, of course, preparing the course. And the guy hit me with a shovel um, oh, no. right into my tibia. And um, I didn't fall. I don't know how he did it, because he was on my left. And, he, and, and the quarter of the shovel went into my tibia. He didn't cut the muscle. And I didn't fall. And I thought, well, maybe has he broken my leg? So I finished on one leg and stopped and stood on it. It worked. And then uh, uh, we had to ski down the hill. So to get for lunch. And so we get down the hill, we're running late, and our trainer said, yeah, we must be, you know, you know one o'clock on the hill, whatever, to practice long. And um, after eating a fast lunch, I went up to my room, and I realized <laughs> my ski boot was full of blood. And um, so I ran down the street, and found a doctor, sewed it up, and then I got blasted for being late for practice. <laughs> <laughs> something else again. Like the first year, um, one of the years, we raced to Hong Kong, and uh, the girls don't do that anymore. Um, but we started lower than the Mosa Fall, the famous Mosa Fall. And, but the one year, uh, we're skiing down to our start, or down to practice long, I can't remember which, I think I was on slalom skis. And the whole Austrian ladies team is lined up on the edge of the Mosa Fall, you know, looking over our little near the Mosa Fall. <laughs> and, uh, well, from a dead stop, he must have hit 60. And then the transition to the bottom. And Pepe saw this and he says, Gamma, uh, Gamma, you know, and off he takes. Well, you know, he did what he said. So <laughs> over we went with our other <laughs> excuse. Well, it, then it developed into a bit of a contest, and the race committee had to uh, ban the women from <laughs> raising the top of the strike. 